All right, so fractional indices. When it comes to index laws, if the index is a fraction, so if I have uh, some base raised to the power of m over n, then I can say that um, I can rewrite it in third form. A root sign with a here. Now the m, the numerator, is the power of m, and the n is the nth root. Okay, so if you draw a square root, if you draw a root sign with no n there, with no number there, it just means it's a square root. But it could also be a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root, depending on what that n is. So, quick example, a to the 7 over 4 is going to be equal to a to the power of 7, the fourth root of that. Alright, so there's fractional indices. I'm not going to do a million examples of those because I've got some more interesting stuff we probably need to cover. For example, uh, the cube root of negative 64. Now, if you were asked to solve that without a calculator, you might have a little bit of trouble, but we can rewrite it. We can move from this form back to this form. So uh, it's going to be negative 64 to the power of... Uh, the, negative 64 is being raised to the power of 1. So it's going to be 1 over the third power, so 1 over 3. So negative 64 to the power of one third. Maybe that didn't help you much, but you should be able to look at negative 64 and understand um, that we can decompose that. We can go f further down. And we can rewrite that as, um, let's see, 4 to the power of 3. Maybe negative 4 to the power of 3. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 16 times negative 4 is 64. So now I have negative 4 to the power of 3 to the power of 1 third. And now I can take that third and that 1 third and bring them together. So I've got negative 4, or expand those brackets, 3 over 3, which is simply negative 4 to the 1. So my answer is negative 4. So recapping, I had it in square root form. I moved it out of square root form into fractional indice form. And then I decomposed my base so that my fractional indice kind of went away. All right, uh, tough question there. Try another one. So here's another example. Uh, the square root of 16 to the power of 5. Now, doing 16 to the power of 5 in your head and then trying to square root it is really difficult. But... If we write it as a fractional indice, we can see that this is going to be 16. The power here is the numerator. And we said it was a square root, so it's uh, to the power of uh, over 2. Now, there's a couple of different ways I could break this up. I could break it up as um, 16 to the power of 5 to the power of 1 half. Because you can see that if I take 5 and multiply it by 1 half, I'll end up with 5 over 2, which is where I started. Another way that you could break it up is to swap over the 5 and the 1 half. Is to say that 16 to the 1 half to the power of 5. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just which one you think is going to get you closer to the answer. So if I look at 16 to the 1 half, I, and 16 to the power of 5. Okay, let's see what happens next. If I take 16 to the power of a half, I can look at 16 and say, oh, uh, that's the same as 4 squared. And so now I've got 4 squared to the power of 1 half to the power of 5. Now that's 4 squared times 1 half, uh, 2 over 2, that's 1. So that's 4 to the power of 1 to the power of Five. Now, can I do that? Maybe uh, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Times four. Uh, that's going to be 4, 16, 64. Um, 64 times 4 is going to be a fairly big number, uh, 256. And 256 times 4 is going to be um, 1024. And I know that because I played 2048. Alright, so I have an answer there. 
can I get to an answer in the with the other method, I suppose? So this time I've got 16 to the power of 5, and 16 to the power of 5 is a large number. Instead of breaking 16 into 4 to the 2, just for fun, I might instead break it into 2 to the power of 4. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So then I've got 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 5 to the power of 1 half. Now that's going to be uh, 2 to the 4 to the 5. 4 times 5 is 20 to the power of 1 half. And then 20 times 1 half is uh, 2 to the 10. So now, if you've been playing 2048, you'll know that that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Okay. Um, two different ways to solve the same kind of question. One way is not better than the other. All right. Uh, there's some fancy things you can do with fractional indices. All of the questions are going to be slightly different, but you have a bunch of rules now and you just need to bring those rules to bear on whatever question it is that you've got in front of you.